control decks for this, but he gets to make that up in post board where he gets to overload on discard underworld connections. So here we're going to move into our next feature match. We have Wilson Hunter, Hunter versus Andrew Tenjim. Wilson is playing another black-white mid-range deck versus Andrew, who's playing black-red Devotion. Now, Andrew was actually in our feature match uh, area yesterday playing this deck, um, and it's similar to the deck that Eric Froelich played at Grand Prix Cincinnati. It's basically a mono-black Devotion deck, except instead of Night Vale Spectre, he's splashing red for cards like Rakdos Return. And in these black mirror matches, the best card you can have is Blood Baron of Viscopa. In the post-board games, you can use Sin Collector and Duress to remove your opponent's Devour Flushes, set up a path for it, and it looks like Wilson, Wilson Hunter is in the middle of the match doing that as we speak. Yes, so looks like Andrew is at 27, Wilson is at 10, despite the fact that Wilson is the one with the Blood Baron in play. So I'm assuming Grey Merchant did some heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> Seems safe to assume. So, uh, yeah, like you said, this is game three here. So all the marbles uh, for this game. And with a Blood Baron on Wilson's side of the board, it seems like it's going to be pretty tough for Andrew to kind of overcome this. But um, he does have an Underworld Connections in play, so he's going to be able to draw some action. Grey Merchant, obviously one of the cards that can kind of get him back into the game. If you can kind of chain Grey Merchants, um, it can overcome a lot. Yeah, the mixture of of Pack Rat in Wilson's hand, which is another layer of threat that he has alongside his own Unworld Connections. It's going to make things pretty challenging for Andrew here. So it looks like, yeah, Wilson has that um, Pack Rat along with the Devour Flesh in his hand. He's going to draw a card with Unworld Connection, dropping himself to 13. And I don't believe that Andrew has cards like Mizium Mortars after board. He has one copy in the sideboard. We, had a, we actually had exactly this type of matchup earlier on camera and the black red list in question had no copies of Vizium Mortar, mm -hmm. so Blood Baron was essentially unchecked. So Blood Baron basically is going to be difficult for Andrew to, he's got, yeah, with that one copy of Vizium Mortars, it doesn't seem like um, it's going to be easy for him to deal with that Blood Baron. Andrew is at 16. Again, his outs are more realistically probably chaining multiple Grey Merchants and trying to just gain enough life that way, but it's going to be hard because Wilson now is putting even more pressure on with a Pack Rat. The, the upside here is I assume Andrew did bring in his copy of Mizium Mortars because of Blood Baron, and he's actually in a position where he can overload Mizium Mortars. He's drawn enough red dual lands where that's a thing, and if he does that, he clears out not only the Blood Baron, but the Sin Collector and the Pack Rat as well. Yeah, so Andrew's pretty much all in on that one Mizium Mortars because it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get enough devotion for us, the Grey Merchant plan. And, and Wilson, with Wilson at 17, it's going to be tough. Yeah, 17 and climbing. I yeah. mean, you know, Wilson's going to be pulling himself higher and higher here. So here we see a pithing needle. Um, let's see if Wilson responds. He could, he, if he wants to get that pack rat activation, he'll have to do it now because there's a good chance Andrew will probably name pack rat. It's either, I would imagine it's either going to be pack rat or planes, depending on if Andrew cares about the underworld connections to the pack rat more. And I have to imagine it's, it's pack rat because Wilson's going to be able to get to a position soon where his pack rat is outside of Mizium Mortar's range, and then Andrew has no hope. Andrew needs to play this game in such a way where he can still play to his one Mizium Mortars, assuming that he's brought it in. Yeah. Andrew's at 15, so he does have some life to work with, but again, this could, we, could, we could be talking about a two-turn clock pretty quickly because of that pack rat. And Ant Wilson does have a Mutavolt in play as well, so there are currently those pack rats could be attacking for, as three threes. Yeah. And that's the upside of making a rat here, is with the Mutavolt in play, you can send them into the Grey Merchant and deal additional points of damage. So Wilson does just, just that. He responds by activating Pack Rat. And I believe Andrew probably named Pithing Needle. And uh, he, yes, he, is, he named Pack Rat with the Pithing Needle. So let's see what other plays he has. Uh, Lifebane Zombie comes down for Andrew. Wilson just reveals that Devour Flesh. So Andrew still has a... Underworld Connections in play, so if he does draw another Grey Merchant, it would be uh, draining Wilson for eight. But again, Wilson is likely going to go up to 21 from this attack, and he just drew a Hero's Downfall. And again, keep in mind, Andrew is still drawing very live to Mizium Mortars right now. Yes, Mizium Mortars is, is likely the, the, the main out that Andrew's looking for right here. And that's the upside of having one Mizium Mortar somewhere in your 75. It does give you an out to Blood Baron, and there's sometimes where it's the highest upside draw you can basically have in the format. Yeah, I don't think you want... I, I don't think Mizium Mortars is a card that you really want to draw multiples of with a deck like this, but I agree with you. Having an out to Blood Baron is just really nice, which is something that Wilson deck just doesn't have. You have to rely on hoping to get there with Devour Flesh. Yeah. 
So Andrew drawing going down to 10 with the Underworld connections. And uh, let's see here. He's still live with Busy Mortis. He still has a turn, I believe. Just plays the land and has to pass. Let's see if Wilson decides to cast Heroes Townfall on the Grey Merchant. And no, it looks like he does not want to attack with his pack rats yet. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that, that Wilson didn't try to go a little bit more aggressive there as uh, maybe he doesn't know about Andrew's access to busy mortars here, but uh, it feels like you should try to be pushing through more damage if for no other reason than Andrew has Underworld Connections active. Yeah, Wilson's sequencing here seems a little loose. He could have drawn a card prior to combat. Now he has ultimate price and hero's downfall, so he could have actually just killed both of Andrew's blockers and attacked with everything and killed him. Yeah. Um, now, Vizio Mortis is still alive. He's going to go down to five here. So let's see, does he, ha does he draw it or not? And the way that Andrew's drawing that card right there, to me, it looks like he does have Mizium Mortars in his deck. He's aware that this yeah. is a, a draw step he's, he still has access to. So, great. It looks like we're going to see a Desecration Demon. The other, the other out that Wilson's giving uh, Andrew by not going, being more aggressive is Grey Merchant. Obviously, it won't kill him, but it'll buy Andrew more time to draw Mizium Mortars. Yeah. So, in response, at the end of Andrew's turn, we're going to see a Hero's Downfall. So, it looks like Andrew, Wilson might try to be more aggressive now. With, with Andrew at five, I think he figures, all right, now I'm just going to try to kill you. So, yeah, we're going to see a Hero's Downfall targeting Desecration Demon. And Andrew actually may want to devour Flesh himself here, as he can't really devour Flesh Wilson's board profitably at this point, but Six Life might give him another turn. Yeah, he's, he's just trying to stay alive for one more turn, so he can try to draw into that Mizzy Mortis. And Wilson's going to stop that life gain by casting Ultimate Price in response. It looks like. And nope, he's, he's thinking about it. And no, he lets it resolve. So Andrew's going to go up to 11. So it looks like Wilson might have given Andrew yet another turn. Yeah, this could be huge. I mean, and, and another turn in this scenario could also mean two draw steps, not just Andrew's own draw step, but off the other world connections as well. So nope, it looks like he is going for it. He's going to, if he casts Devour Flesh, oh no, because Andrew still has the, the Mute of Ult in play as well. Yeah. So. so now he's going to cast Devour Flesh. Andrew, if he sacks the Lightbane Zombie, he'll go up to 12. And then he needs to jump, put the Muta Vault in front of a pack rat. Well, he can block the, he can jump block the Blood Baron with a Muta Vault. Yeah. And then, you know, he takes six, seven, eight from this hit, goes to four. That still uh, gives him the opportunity to use Underworld Connections to find missing Mortars, even in the face of Wilson's Muta Vault. So uh, Muta Vault can attack, Muta Vault can attack too. So if he, if he jump blocks the Blood Baron, he would take 10, dropping to two. But like you said, he could still activate Underworld Connections once even and try to get there that way. So yeah, even, it looks like Andrew is going to activate Chump Block. Like you said, he's going to Chump Block the Blood Baron, and he's going to take 10, and Obstadon yeah, finishes exactly things lethal. off. Yep. So Wilson Hunter defeats Andrew Tenjum 2-1, to one, and now An Wilson moves to 11-3. Um, with only two rounds left, you got to sink his chance.